Hey guys, it's Julie. I'm out with Benny. 95 pound Bernadoodle and wow, it is evident the work that Josh has put in with his walk because this is really the first time I've handled him in his, what is he, just started his third week. He goes home a week from today. Um, and wow, what a difference from drop off day. Have you ever been dragged around by a 95 pound dog? It's not fun, but here I am now on a walking path. He is walking so much more respectful. I've got the leash in my hand, but you can barely feel it. Uh, and that's how we like our dogs. He's walking at my left side, slightly behind me, following my left leg. So today we're just taking a walk with really a new handler in a new location. We're at the park um, on a nice little walking path here. And I'm just watching how he responds to when I say the word heel as a new handler, um, does he pretend like he's never been trained? Uh, and if so, what happens when I hit the e-collar? Because ultimately that's what we want our owners to be able to do. If they're not listening, owner clicks a button and they listen. Very nice job. I mean, look at how respectful he's being of my heel command. Of course, I've got my heel collar here. I got my tone to use if he veers off to the side or too far behind. I've got my stim to use, which is the black button with the red button together, but really it's just the black one with the stim that gets the number on the screen. I've got that to use if he becomes too pushy, right? So we've got all these tools to use. As long as he's being respectful and doing what he's supposed to, which is just walking nicely, I don't hit any of the buttons, right? So he feels like what it's like to be successful. Click, that was a stim right there. Because I don't want him sniffing while we're walking. Save the sniffing for when you're on break. That's one of the beauties of training is that when you're on break, you can go do all that stuff, just not when we're walking. A good boy we've got a down at a distance and remember there's stuff going on there's a playground full of kids over there and he's not being held down by anything so he's got lots of options but he's choosing to listen to me let's try a recall so remember when we need to recall our dogs we're gonna say their name give a little space say the recall word and tap the tone Benny come good boy and he comes and sits <laughs> or lays down that's great Let's re uh, release him. Let him go have some fun. Break. Good boy. Go potty. And this is where he gets to use that freedom that he's earned. Go potty. Go sleep. And the beautiful thing is that when I need to get him back to me, all I do is recall him. So we've got control. Break. Go potty. Good boy. That's it. So like, let's say, you know, we're at a park. So let's say another person started walking up to us. Obviously I would use my recall, okay, to get him back to me and put him in a stationary command or start walking. So he doesn't run up to that person. Let him sniff a little bit, let him have some fun. And I'll show you how we're gonna recall him back. Sometimes I, I feel like these dogs just can't believe that they're being let loose off a leash in a public place like this. Like they don't almost know what to do with that new freedom, but he's learning. He's learning to sniff. He's learning to use that nose. He's learning to use his freedom responsibly. And he's gonna go poop. I'm gonna turn this off and go get a bag. Heel. That was a tone only recall back to a heel back to our walk after a really nice break. I should stop. He should sit. Good boy. Heel. Whenever I say heel, I'm also tapping that tone button. This is such a nice walk. I'm going to tap that tone and say heel again. Heel. Good boy, and see how he joins up with me again? Very, very nice. If he starts lagging too far behind, I can always tap my tone again, and he closes the gap. Good boy.
What a little Muppet.